I want to thank God for this opportunity that I'm here. Thank you for all his, his blessings that he has upon us. It is such an honor for me to be here. So welcome everyone here, but also welcome everyone that is uh, on virtual, on that's uh, zooming in. I appreciate all you guys. Make sure that you have some questions for me. So um, I'm just, we're just here. I'm just going to talk story. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about my, uh, my life, but also I'm going to tell you about my organization, Hate is Wrong, and we have it up there. And then I'm going to bring on a good friend of mine, Paul, who we're going to just, uh, again, talk story and just, uh, and just uh, it's, it's amazing to be here. So Pixar, thank you so much for having me. For an icebreaker, um, for an icebreaker, I'm going to do a song for you. Uh, I just, we just did this, what, 20 minutes ago. He came in, I needed a guitar player, and so I uh, invited a good friend of mine, Stefan uh, Fabiano. Uh, and a lot of you may think that you know he's, well, he is Italian, but he's also uh, Samoan and Tongan. So uh, I really appreciate. It. Yeah, give him a hand. So this is the entertainment part of uh, Pixar. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys for uh, for having me. So let's do it. You ready? Yep. Awesome. Let's do this. All right, here we go. <laughs> A secret code, David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? Goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor falls and the major lifts, and the backward king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now your faith was strong, but you needed proof. Saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew ya. She tied you to the kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew hallelujah. 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 There's a God above. All I've ever learned from love is how to shoot somebody while too young. It's not the cry that you hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a code and it's a broken. Hallelujah. community. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why I'm here is because I got invited to a Kava talk uh, where Simi is one of the founders of it and then uh, he introduced me to his beautiful wife uh, Susie, um, told me about Kava, uh, Kava talk, also told me about Pixar and that's why I'm here because as a Polynesian man growing up in Minnesota, I was growing up in Hawaii but living in Minnesota for 29 years, it is great to sort of kind of reconnect with everything. Um, for myself, I'm going to tell you guys a story. 
Um, and then I'm also going to try to, you know, try to help you guys find your own voices within yourself. Right? That is one of the biggest things. When I go around the country, I try to help people to find their voices and their place in life. And so I tell them the thing below their nose and above their chin is called a mouth. Right? You need to use and find your voice. You need to speak up because many times in our community, we have lost our voices. But it takes people and organizations like Pixar to help us to find our voices and find a way. Uh, and then, um, so anyway, I was born and raised in, um, in Hawaii, uh, in Wamanalo. Yeah, yes, Wamanalo. <laughs> born and raised in Wamanalo, right? I am Samoan, German, French. Uh, my last name is supposed to be Devol, but my mom, uh, my dad, sorry, my dad took my, uh, his, uh, his mother's name instead of his, his dad's name. So instead of the Devol, I am a Tua Olo. Uh, he is the son of Sina Ilematie uh, from Pango. My mom is uh, Maida Yabasa Tavai. Uh, both of my parents are from, uh, are from uh, uh, Pango, American Samoa. And um, so when I grew up in Hawaii because my, um, my dad um, and my mom migrated to the island of Hawaii to try to get a better life for their children. I'm the youngest of eight in my, in my household. And I know a lot of you guys come from big families as well. Um, but I'm here to tell you, I'm gonna sit down so, like you said, we're talking story. I'm here to, to tell you a story, right? And like my life uh, was not like the Moana story. Right? Uh, my life was not like that Moana story, right? I grew up uh, in a very abusive, uh, abusive environment, right? And it was one of those things where I had to sort of find my own way. I lost my voice. Uh, and I didn't, and then I didn't know how to do it. And I tell you, I, I'm telling you this because a lot of times people think um, they know someone, right? But in actuality, they don't. And so, like all my hardships and everything that I've gone through in my whole life has come to the point where I am today, right? Everything that I that have knocked me down, and all those times that I have gotten up every single time. I probably got knocked out around a thousand times, but I have gotten up because, you know what? I knew there was a better purpose in something in my life. I knew that there was. Because I remember growing up um, and just having visions of myself being in a faraway land. And people think that I'm crazy or I'm a psychic. Well, I'm not crazy or I'm not a psychic. But I think all of you guys are in touch with yourself, right? In the inner beauty within yourself. When you're little, you sort of the imagination that you use, right? And for myself, um, I was, I didn't, I didn't, I, I embraced that. A lot of people don't embrace that. I embraced that when I was a small kid and I saw things that I, you know, that I thought that I didn't understand. But growing and growing older and, uh, and, and pursuing my life and stuff, I figured out, you know, all the things that I needed to do. So I grew up in Hawaii. I went to Oregon State University, uh, started playing football. I, I played football for Oregon State University. I got drafted to, um, I got drafted to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, if you have any Green Bay Packer fans, yeah, so a lot of Green Bay Packer fans. Um, so I'm giving you like a, a sort of kind of a shortcut version, so we can get to, uh, to the point where you know of, the, of this of this speech. But went uh, got drafted in the second round to uh, Green Bay. Uh, I was a 32nd pick uh, overall, which uh, and I went to a school that I, you know I really thought I wasn't going to be drafted because we were horrible. But I guess I was good, right? So I don't know. I mean, but it was just one of those things. It was definitely a huge blessing when I got took, taken uh, with the, uh, the the Green Bay Packers. I played there for two years, um, and then I went over to the Minnesota Vikings, and I played for the Minnesota Vikings for uh, for five years. And it was one of those things where um, I love Minnesota so much that I decided to, to make that my home. I've been there for 29 years, y'all, in the freezing cold. And people always ask me why and how do I do it? Well, why? Because I think it was a great place to raise my kids. Uh, a great opportunity for me to raise my kids. I have two beautiful kids. And how? I just bought a bigger jacket. Yeah, you just did one of those big jackets and stuff. And then you just deal with it. But no, Minnesota is such an amazing place. Um, you know, un unfortunately, as we all know, um, there's so many things that have happened in Minnesota in the last couple months, and so it's sort of kind of given Minnesota a bad name uh, with all the riots and things that have happened there. 
But I tell you what, please do not judge us because of that incident, but just make sure that you understand, you know, and, and wherever you're from, wherever you go, to make sure you learn the culture and also learn about the people and stuff like that. So I, uh, Minnesota played for the, uh, after Minnesota, I went to um, Jacksonville Jaguars, played for a year. From there, I went to um, um, the Carolina Panthers, and then I went, to the, I went to the Super Bowl with Atlanta. So I was uh, in 1998, went to the Super Bowl with Atlanta, and it was an amazing experience. Um, so in nine, and after retiring from football, um, after retiring from football in, in 2000, in 2002, um, I made the biggest decision of my life. Um, and that was, I came out of the closet. I came out uh, on HBO Real Sports. Uh, people ask, always ask me why I came out on HBO. The reason why is because I could sort of, you know, you just, um, so that you, you have a venue that can, you can reach everybody instead of, you know, you know, going, I'm coming out in a smaller venue and then obviously, you know, the story goes on and on and then by the time you hear the story, is something wrong. So I want to make sure that I sort of knocked all the birds out with one stone, right? And so came out, and I tell you what, that was uh, a pinnacle of my life because it was one of those things where growing up in a Polynesian family and growing up um, in, with a crippling secret, it was very difficult for me to, um, to embrace who I truly was. Not just myself, but the Polynesian culture, uh, my family. And I say that is because, you know, back in those days, it wasn't really understood. Really, the education was not there for a lot of our, our, my friends or my family to understand who I truly was as a person. And so a lot of things were hidden, right? I lost my voice. A lot of things I pushed aside, right? I, I, um, I, I, I fled from my family. I fled from my friends. I tried to keep myself that distance between um, my, you know, the, the people that I loved and myself because of that crippling secret that I had inside me. And it was very, um, it was very difficult during those times. And I, I say those times because I'm 52 years old, and that was back in, 19, uh, in the 80s, right? And it was we didn't have any education back then. We didn't have you know any type of understanding of, of who I truly was. So in 2002, I came out on HBO, and I tell you, it was the most amazing feeling that I had in the whole world because um, it was I was able to to take that crippling secret that I had and to come out and tell the world that I was gay, right? Telling everyone the type of per the who I was inside, and I tell you, it was the most amazing feeling because this huge burden just fell off, right, of my shoulder. I felt like light as a feather, right? But when I jumped on the scale, I was still 350 pounds, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, it was. Well, maybe like 340, but it was okay. You know what I'm talking about. But it felt so liberating. And so that quick story from growing up in Hawaii, going to college, playing football, playing the NFL, and coming to that point in 2002, right? That point where I, Sarah Tuolo, had to make a decision, not only for myself, but for also for my kids, I had two beautiful kids that I adopted in 2000 after I graduated, uh, sorry, graduated after I retired from football. And it was that time I needed to make a decision. And because we were finding it hard to raise our kids, raise your hand if you have kids, children. Like everyone in this room had children, right? So it becomes something that you want your children to be proud of who you are. You want your children to understand where you come from, but without, sort of looking in the mirror and confronting yourself and getting rid of all the crippling secrets and getting rid of all that hate, getting rid of all the, the bad energy that you have in your life, without you getting rid of all of that, it's not going to happen. It's definitely not going to happen. So that is the choice in 2002. We came out to the world to make sure that everybody knew that who I truly was within myself. And I tell you what, when I was a little kid, I saw my friends, my, my, my friends beating up another kid, calling him Fakalati, Fafafine, right, Mahu. And I asked him, I asked my friend, why are you guys doing that? Why are you doing that, right? Because in our culture and stuff, it really isn't that, you know, it's not, you, you, it's not, you can't, 
You can't be gay in our culture. You can be a Fafa Fina, and we can talk about that later, but as far as being somebody masculine like myself, it was very difficult. And so I asked the child, what are you doing? And he said, well, uh, he like, uh, I'm gonna try to paraphrase, uh, he like playing with the girl's stuff, right? He likes, uh, uh, you know, he like, you know, dressing up with, uh, you know, he like hanging out with the girls. And so for myself, right, for myself, what I saw at that moment, I saw hate, right? The hate that within that, that kid, all my friends were throwing rocks at him, they were spitting on him, they were calling him names, all of that, right? And then you know what I saw? I saw a little bit of myself in that kid, right? Because I wanted to play with my sister's stuff. I wanted to hang out with the girls, right? I wanted to do all that things, but I couldn't, right? Because after seeing all of that, that is the day where I tell everybody, that is the day where I took that child within me, I took that child within me, I opened the door, and I threw him in the closet, and I closed the door. I closed the door, right? I closed the door. But in 2002, let me tell you this. I was able to go back, open that door, and let that child out, the child that we had within all ourselves. And why am I telling you all of this, right? Some of you guys, I can give you probably, why am I telling you? Because you can't really, there's no healing if you don't figure it out. There's no, you can't, you can't heal if you don't get rid of all that, that crippling secret or everything that you have in your life, right? You can't be close to your family if you don't get rid of all of that, right? You can't. Those are things, and then you think, okay, this is my story, but you think about all the young girls and boys in, in the Polynesian culture who is who have gone through the same thing I did by right? seeing all of those things. And people understand the reason, the re uh, they always ask me the reason why I speak. That is the reason why, right? I speak for my children, I speak for all the all the, the, the younger generation that couldn't have a voice, right? That's what I do. So this is the reason why I'm telling you this. You have to find your voice, people. You got to find your voice. If you can't find your voice, then nothing's going to happen, right? You're going to go every single day of your lives and do the same routine that you do, right? If you don't deal with the problems that you have in your life, the things that, you know, you look in the mirror and that hurts you inside, if you don't deal with that, I tell you what, it's not going to happen. The reason why I'm here and I'm off... I'm, I'm excited because the reason I'm, I'm here, I get to tell my story. And whoever is watching right now, if you're watching, these kids that are watching, I'm hoping that my story will help them to come out, will help them to face their fears, will help them to find their voices, because a lot of our younger generation have lost their voices. Now, rolling back, you know, um, rolling forward again, this thing right here, Hate in any form is wrong. You see that behind me. Hate in any form is wrong. The reason why I created this saying, when I played in the NFL, when I was in the closet, when I was living with, um, with, uh, with depression, I was living with the hurt, was living with all this pain, I created this saying, right? Hate in, in any form is wrong. Because you know what? I wanted to fight the fight within the shadow, right? I couldn't be myself, right? So when I created this, hate in any form is wrong, it's one of those things where you can't put anything that is degrading underneath that, right? Sexism, racism, all of that. So if anyone said anything in the, in the locker room, you know, hey, about homosexuality, I said, dude, hate in any form is wrong. About their sisters or moms or anything like that, I said, hey, hate in any form is wrong, right? That was my way to fight the fight, and so that's why I, I, ha I created this saying, hate in any form is wrong. And moving forward, uh, we have, uh, the Super Bowl was in Minnesota four years ago. It was in Minnesota. So what I decided to do, I've been using this saying throughout my whole life, after retiring and, um, uh, and going around the country and speaking on homophobia and sports and speaking on inclusion and speaking on diversity and speaking on, on love and, and anti-bullying, I also, doing all of that, um, I decided to create an organization, a nonprofit that would help, that would help the younger generation, that would help uh, anti-bullying, also uh, a, a nonprofit that would um, foster the diversity and inclusion within um, the LGBTQ community and professional sports. And I know it's like I'm standing here in front of a lot, in all of you, right? I'm standing here and I'm telling you my story. And it's one of those things and stuff this sort of relates to everybody, right? 
it's not an individual culture or anything that's like I'm talking to. I'm talking to everybody. Hate in any form is wrong. Hate in any form is wrong. The self, the title says it all, right? Hate in any form is wrong, right? So we can put everything underneath that title, right? We can, we can put, like I said, sexism, racism, homophobia, uh, what is it? Um, uh, what we can put, like, uh, uh, four eyes. You know, when I go and do these anti-bullying programs, and I, you know, I, I put this up, and we put it on a chalkboard, and all these kids, you know, well, pimple face, like, we're all these, all these negative things, right? All this, like, four eyes, all fat, or whatever, skinny, and it's one of those things where when you start doing that, when you start um, putting things down and making visible for uh, like a lot of these kids to see, it's one of those things where then you're putting it on the table to be discussed and to be talked. Because after you're doing that, it'd be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you didn't like when I called you four eyes. I thought it was a joke. Well, that joke hurts, right? So it's one of those things where we, you, we started, I mean, we started putting so many phrases underneath hating any form is wrong. And let me tell you, it created this discussion that for kids to talk about the things that hurt them the most, right? And as we like talked with picture that what you guys did, you separating, you guys separated uh, the parents from, uh, from the kids and educating the parents on things, educating the kids on things, bringing them together, how we can communicate to each other. That's the key, right? The key is learning as a parent how to communicate with your kids and how your kids can communicate with you, right? And to sort of put out that alofa, right? To put out that love, put to, uh, you know, all of that, the positive energy. But I also tell people this, in order for you to put out positive energy, right? For you to look at, um, to, um, to put out that love out into the universe, you gotta get rid of all your shit. Seriously, everything. You gotta get rid of all your shit. So all, and you know, in order for you to put that, you can't have that negative energy. You can't be a racist. You can't be hateful. You can't be, you gotta get rid of, and sometimes it's just easy as telling it to go away, right? Telling it to say, you know, just to say, you know what, get out of my life. Using that saying, get out of my life. Or, you know what, putting it up to God. Right? Because he can handle anything. God can handle anything. People always ask me the question, uh, why are you here? Why are you still here? Because you should be six feet under. With all the things that you've gone through in your life, all the hate, everything you've gone through, all the abuse, all the uh, getting bullied, all of that, why are you still here? Well, I'm going to tell you this. This is a secret. Well, it's not a secret. It's God. The man upstairs. He loves me, and he loves you as much as, and he loves everyone. So that is the secret why I'm here, right? Because one of the things and stuff I know uh, in my life is that any time that I went through a hard time in my life, any time that I wanted to kill myself, any time that I was just feeling down and out, I would just give it up to the man upstairs, right? And people always ask me that question, how can you be gay and, and how can you be a Christian? Well, if you have to ask me that first question, then maybe you're not a Christian, right? Maybe you don't believe in God. Maybe you're not walking to walk or talking to talk, right? Because even if you don't like the color of my skin or who I decide to give my heart to or my hair, I'm still a child of God, right? Regardless, right? What your beliefs are, right, on things as a matter, right? And see, this is the problem right now and stuff is that people don't, you have to understand that I am a child of God no matter what you think of who I decide to give my heart to or anything. When I came out in 2002, we were getting death threats. We were getting hateful emails. They were telling me that I was an abomination. My kids are abomination. We're all going to hell. Imagine all of that was supposed to be coming from people that love God, right? The hate that came out, right? All of that. Why am I telling you this? Because it's one of the other things that you need to, I was afraid. I was absolutely afraid. I was so scared, right, to tell people that I love God. You know the reason why? I was afraid because they were, people would just always, you know, ask me the question that I just asked you guys, why, right? But I tell you what, if you're asking me if I'm a sinner, if homosexuality is a sin, I'm gonna tell you no. But if you ask me if I'm a sinner just like you, I'm gonna say yes, because in the Bible it says we all fall short of the glory of God, right? Meaning all of us, not all of us. And if you're asking me a question and stuff, if I'm gonna go to heaven, Yes, you know why? Because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. 
That's why. It's already been paid. And I know I didn't, you know, I, I don't think you're expecting me to take this to this, you know, this part, uh, this sort of come, this topic, but I am because a lot of kids out there that are part of the LGBTQ community are suffering because of this. We, 90% of us have grown up, Polynesians, white, whatever, Asians, African Americans, have grown up in some sort of religion. And to know that if you come out and you tell the truth about yourself, you tell the truth about yourself, that you will be excluded from everything, that you will be hated on. I'm sorry. That is the reason why I'm telling you this right now. Because I have so many Polynesian kids that reach out to me, so many kids that reach out to me about this. They love God just as much as I do, but the hate that we get every single time telling us that we are an abomination or stuff, is, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. You're looking at me and stuff, you're seeing this big 6'4", 300-pound Samoan, right? NFL player and stuff. Right? What are you expecting today when you were going to, that you were going to, what were you expecting? I use this opportunity to help. I use this opportunity to love. I use this opportunity and stuff for all these kids out there, all the younger generation that are suffering, right? You may look at me and stuff and you may call me names and you may tell me that, that you know, that I'm a fag, that I'm, a, that I'm gay and I'm, I'm a queer and all of that. But I don't care because I can handle it. But when you start attacking our younger generation and stuff that really do love God, that is the problem that I have. That's the problem I have. Hate in any form is wrong, right? You want to support us, support us. You don't want to support us, don't support us. It's one of those things, you know what? I, don't, I didn't create this organization and stuff so you could feel better. I created this organization and stuff so I could help people. So I can love people as God loves all of us, as Jesus Christ did, right? You always use that term and you always use it against us, right? What would Jesus do? Well, he would definitely not hate. I know that for a fact. So, I just want this, you know, hate in any form is wrong. And I just, and I, I know, I, I, I sort of kind of sidetracked to this, but I just felt it, it's in my heart that I had to, like, I had to say it, right? Especially for our Polynesian, the younger generation, for my little nephews and my cousins that are struggling right now. I just felt in my heart that I needed to put this message out. It's really not about me. It's not about my organization. It's not about anything, right? It's about us helping, right? teaching our younger generation, right? Giving them away, right? And not telling them that they are, they, they are, they're nothing. Right? Not telling them that they're an abomination, but really, really, really showing them what a true Christian should be. Right? That's love, love, aloha, 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 all of that, right? So I don't know why this, this whole thing just sort of kind of came this way, right? But um, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm, I'm not apologizing for it because I know it's a message that needed to go out to our Polynesian culture, needed to go out to everyone out there, right? I know. I just, uh, I love all you guys, and I really do. People always, you know, like I used to have this smile on my face when I was in the cl uh, closet to hide all the pain, yeah, from killing myself or whatever, right? to like going home after every game, drinking like a bottle of tequila, maybe two, right, to so that kind of ease the pain. But now, when you see a smile on my face, I really mean it. Like when I say I love you, I really mean it. I love you like God would love you, right? And I just pray that you would love me and love the LGBTQ community just as much as you love the other person next to you, right? So um, after that, I just want to say, so if anybody has any questions, right? So going back to the whole finding your voice, right? You have to. Right? I tell these kids to scream and shout. Ah! Makes them feel better. Seriously. Right? It does. It makes these kids feel better when they find their voices, right? When they can like walk, you know, and they can talk to their parents and they can talk to their friends and truly be who they were. Right? Are, sorry. Um, so, yeah, find your voice. That's the same below your nose and above the chin, right? Whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do to get rid of it, whatever you need to do, look in the mirror, scream at yourself or whatever, pray, meditate, uh, whatever, right? Do it because I promise you it'll make you a better person. If you put out hate, you will get hate back. If you put out love and a lofa, I tell you what, you will get love back. 
I promise you, right? And for that hateful person that I've always said this, right? For that hateful person that you know in your life, show him some love or her some love. They might not give love back, but I tell you what, it is going to change their life. It's definitely going to change their life, right? And you might make them a better person by just doing this, right? So pass it forward, all of that. So if anyone have any questions, yeah. please do. Uh, any football yeah. questions, how much I bench or whatever like that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> The bench went kind of down. I'm 52. What do you expect? What? Anyway. Yes, to me. Uh, when you decided to come out, you know, when you first speak out, did you uh, set a timeline? Or did you think about it two years before and set a day to say what? Or is it just the right moment and come out? Um, so, Stevie's question was, was there a timeline? Um, no, there was no timeline. I think what had happened is a good friend of mine came, wanted to do a documentary story on our lives, anonymously, right? And so um, he wanted to do a story about me and my family, the kids. And so I just, I said, sure. So he went, across, he went around and he asked a bunch of the TV people and the HBO came back and said, yeah, if he wants to come out, that'd be fantastic. And so I just um, talked to my partner at the time. I looked at my kids and just go, the love that I have for my kids, you know, there's not no time to come out right, or anything. We don't plan it or anything like that. So I just came out. We just came out, and I tell you what, it was, it was, it was definitely a blessing. Yeah, yeah I asked this question, but most of us, I'm not talking about some now. Yeah. But most of us, who, they say I'm going to do this good thing, and then I'll set a timeline. Yeah. I think um, I, it's not a timeline thing. I think uh, as far as with the LGBTQ community, it's the point in anyone's life that we come to a crossroads, right? You come to a crossroad in your life, and either what, either you're going to kill yourself, or you're going to, or you're going to come out, and you're going to, and so that's, or you know, you come to be or not to be, right? If you if you if you want to be a part of life or not, so that's I think that's that's what um, everyone comes to that crossroads and makes that decision, right? It doesn't matter if they're, lived, they're, they're young or they're older or I have guys, friends of mine, girlfriends of mine, they come out when they're like 60, 70 years old, right? Because that's, you know, for them, that's the time that they felt like they could, right? But a lot of it has the fear of, um, a fear of like the religion thing, right? The family, not accepting. Can you imagine this? I'm going to tell you guys this. So uh, throughout your whole life, right? Throughout your whole life, you foster relationships with your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, Right. Your friends, your family, right? You foster that, you know. And then when it comes to a point and stuff where you have to tell the truth about that yourself, because that's what we were taught, right? You got to tell the truth about yourself. You tell your, your, the truth about yourself, and then you could lose all of them. So you wonder why a lot of them wait? <laughs> because they don't want to lose their loved one. They don't want to lose their sister or their brother or their brother or whatever, right? They don't want to do that. But can you imagine that? So going out through a whole life, you know, and then having, you can lose them by just telling the truth, right? So, yeah, anybody have any questions online? Um, so, like I said, I, you know, I sorry, I sort of kind of took a side, side, uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah? Sarah, Sarah, Timmy asked. Oh, no, right here. Oh. Anyway, no, but that's a nice thing. The segment was. I was gonna bring Paul on. So can we bring Paul on to the thing so we can talk? Hey, Ed. All right. Hi, Paul. What hey, brother. First, first of all, thank you for sharing your story and thank you for being open. I, uh, one of the one of the points that you brought to the forefront, which is something that a lot of people struggle with, is understanding the word grace. Right. 
but for his grace, we're able to not only succeed and live life, but you know, it's not our job to judge people, man. Right. That's, that's the big man's job. And I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues that I see amongst some of our young, amongst our youth, you're, you use the word finding your voice. Can you, finding your voice could also be like acknowledging your identity, right. admitting who you are. Finding your voice could also be accepting who you are. Right. And I think part of the, part of the, Part of the hardest part for a lot of the youth of today in, in trying to rectify or trying to bring that to a balance is understanding how to do that. Do you have any, for those that are watching this, that are going to watch this on the Facebook, what are some of the suggestions that you have for them that they could do or some of the things that, you know, that they may not know how to ease into this as, as, as willfully as you did? Maybe there might be some steps or there might be some support or some, or some steps that they can take safely that will allow them to make that step up to the open. Well, a uh, couple of things, right? Can you hear? Can everybody hear? So, yeah. Uh, so a couple of things and stuff, right? I mean, um, everybody, every individual is different, right, when it comes to finding their voices, right? Um, and then also, um, also, there are organizations out there that they can, they can Google, um, that they can reach out to and have this discussion or this conversation with. Um, so it's like, so to find your voice, you're right, right? It's about, uh, um, it's about finding who you are, the identity that you, um, that you have within yourself. Um, but a lot of times, as I discussed earlier, Paul, a lot of our younger generations sort of kind of lose their, you know, lose their voices, right? They don't, they sort of kind of sit in the shadow, they don't want to say anything, because we live in the world of click and post, right? So if you say something, that somebody could just say something negative about you, press the button and it would reach a thousand people, right? <coughs> so, it's, there's, so a lot of our younger generation have sort of kind of lost their voices that way. Um, but you know what, for me, I think everyone, you have, to, uh, you have to be ready within yourself, right? You have to be, you have to find that power within yourself. And if, uh, if, if, if you like reaching out to friends or reaching out to family or reaching out to an organization to sort of kind of help you find that voice or sort of kind of get that support that you need, then that's what you sort of kind of need to do. I hope that understood you sort of kind of got that. I, I'm, I'm going to need, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you like I challenged the young lady earlier. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to figure out a way to dial that message down to its granular level. So where somebody who's 12, 10, 11 can figure out at an early age right. some of the things that they may possibly start or do in order to make that transition comfortable. But also, I think, um, especially when during that age, also I think we need to sort of educate the parents, right? We need to educate the, uh, the older people so they can sort of, sort of understand and see and visually see their you know what their what their child is going through, right? Having an open conversation or making it open so so their so their, their kids can talk to them with whatever they want, right? But as you know and I know, there's so much hate uh, for part of the uh, the LGBTQ community, right? So a lot of that hate sort of kind of resonates to our um, to our older people, and so I think what we need, yes, we need to educate this young the, the, the younger generation, but we also need to educate their parents and the older generation to sort of kind of to, to understand uh, what they're, what, what's going on in this world, basically. Uh, 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 now, I'm gonna give you a big virtual hug for that answer. I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna push you a little further, brother. <laughs> I'm gonna push you because, I'm gonna push you because what you're saying here, and, and, I, and I understand the older, parent, the older parents and older generation. Right. Let's be honest, are those of you that are parents out there, you know when your kid has something that's special about them. <laughs> yeah. You know. You do. But let's, let's not sugarcoat it and by, by, by trying to beat them into something that they're not. Right. And, and, and it, 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 it often scares me sometimes when I, I'm like, like, come on, man. Look at your kid. You should be able to read your kid and know your kid. That's right. your child. You know, it's so funny when, like, um, it's so funny when parents say they don't, they don't know what's going on in their kid's life. Well, you're their parent. You should know what's going on. 
in your kids' life, right? I mean, growing up, I mean, raising my kids, you sort of kind of, in the Polynesian culture, you sort of kind of know everything about what your, you know, your kids are going through. So that, you know, what you're saying right there is true. So Ezra, let me, I'm, I'm going to see if there's anybody out there that wants to ask you a question, but I'm going to leave you one other, one other question. What? Maybe a thought I think of. I honestly, I honestly believe you have a message that is, it's a timeless message that everybody needs to hear, regardless of whether they're Pacific Islander or whatnot. Yeah. The message, it's a message that is, that is wrapped in love, and it needs to be presented in love, not in hate, as you say. But with that being said, look, how can we as a community help you and your cause? My, um, wow. I mean, when you say the community, you say the Polynesian community? I'm talking about everybody in this room right. and everybody that's listening to you today. How can we as this group help you personally? I think, you know, um, just by getting education, right? Knowledge is power, right? You're getting your knowledge and, and you're getting education out there. They're listening to what I say to you, and hopefully you can take what I say and apply it to the people that you, that you are surrounded with, the people that, that you love and love you. I think that's how you do it, right? There's so many times where people sort of kind of like, you know, you can't bother with this person or that person. Well, we have to sort of kind of step up and we need to like um, to get the message out there. Just right now, if you're telling me this, I'm telling everyone that's watching this, that's in this room, if you want to help out, then what you need to do is use the thing above your uh, chin and below your nose, it's called a mouth, and find your voices to help your children, to help the loved ones that you have out there. I can't do it alone. I can only do so much, right? I can only do that so much. But what I can do is bring awareness to everyone that is watching here today Bring awareness to everyone that's in this room um, so they can go out and help and make a change. Make this better a world a better place, not only for people, but also for the family and the people that they love. So I guess that's, you know, if anything, if you need help, call me up. Go to Haters Round, right? You can reach me. I'm not one of those people and stuff where you try to reach me and it's like, ah, I'm sorry, but you have to make an appointment for next month. No, it's not like that, right? So, um, so th I think that's sort of, I think that's what I, what I need, Paul. Bless you, brother. Maybe there's some questions in the audience. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I love you guys so much, right? It's so amazing. Pixar, the things that you're doing, this whole conference has been enlightening just to understand everything that you guys are doing here. And I cannot wait for Hate is Wrong to partner up with you guys so we can make this world a better place, right? If you want to learn more about my organization, please go to hateiswrong.org, uh, and you can learn more. If you want to donate, there's four ways or three ways you can uh, support. Go um, jump on, get on our mailing list, uh, and uh, so you can we can send you a bunch of information on like our Super Bowl party that we're going to be coming, uh, we're we doing, also our uh, inclusion panel that we're doing. Um, so if you want to do that, please sign up for our mailing list. Also, if you want to donate, there's a donate button. Everything helps. Uh, and then also we have these t-shirts, hate, uh, hate in any form is wrong. If you want to purchase that, 100% uh, of it goes to our organization. We are, no or we are an organization that raises money to give money. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for having me here at Pixar, and I look forward to the future. <laughs>